sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to live a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the peering of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. This is God's word. Our verse of the day is Hebrews 2.12. We recite that verse together. Alleluia, alleluia. I will proclaim your name to my people in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our holy gospel for this Sunday is taken from the gospel of Luke chapter 17. This will serve as the basis for our sermon later on. Luke records for us, Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you, forgive, saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. This is the gospel of Christ, our ascended King. You may be seated, and I invite the small children to come forward for the children's message. Here, scoot in, scoot in. Good morning. I don't think I got a high five from you. Elbow bump, there we go, very good. Good to see all of you today. How are we doing? Good. Who, who, who is that? No. Get it, it's a pun. Who, I, I don't have anything for a bunny, sorry. No puns for a bunny. Snowy, yeah. Did, uh, did you all eat breakfast this morning? Yeah. Yeah, I see you all got nice clothes on. You all got dressed up. Did you all brush your teeth this morning? Yeah, yeah, good. Who, who made sure that you had breakfast today? Your mom. 
Yeah, your dad, mom and dad made sure you had breakfast today. Who made sure that you had clothes to wear today? Your mom and dad, yeah. You kind of expect some things from mom and dad, don't you? You expect that they'll make sure that you get food, right? You expect that you'll have clothes or that you'll have stuffed animals to play with and toys to play with, right? We, those, those are things we just kind of know. Mom and dad are going to take care of us, right? Mom and dad are going to take care of us. But mom and dad have expectations of you too, don't they? What do mom and dad expect you guys to do? Yeah, Calvin. Yeah, they expect you to listen, clean your room maybe, right? Not, not hit your sister, right? They don't go, oh, wow, you are such a good boy. Thank you for not hitting your sisters today. I'm so proud. They don't do that. They, they just kind of expect you're not going to hit Gwen, right? Yeah, they kind of expect that. Yeah. Yeah, do they expect you to do some stuff on your own, like you got to brush your teeth, you got to do your homework, you got to clean your room, you got to pick up your toys. They just kind of expect that that's what you're going to do. We have expectations from God. We, we, we expect God to love us because he promises that he will. We expect God to forgive us because he says that's what he does. But God expects us then to live as his children too. And, and it's, it's not because he, he, we're so fearful of what God could do to us. It's because we're so thankful that God has loved us so much that he's forgiven us in Jesus that we want to live for him and we want to obey his word. Okay, so let's fold our hands. Let's thank God for forgiving us and ask him to help us to live as, he, as, as his children. Okay, let's fold our hands and pray. Dear God, thank you for sending me Jesus to pay for my sins. Help me to live a life of love for you and listen to your word every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, nice work. You guys can go sit back down with your parents. We can also head back to child care if you need... If you need that, Adria is in the back there. So if you need child care, otherwise we'll continue with our hymn of the day, The Church is One Foundation.
God's grace, his mercy, and peace be yours in abundance through Christ our King. Amen. The words for our consideration here this morning are taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. I'm going to read a few of those verses again. Jesus told his disciples this parable. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat. Won't he rather say, Prepare my supper. Get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. This is God's word. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Your friends in Christ, she was a, a stay-at-home mom with three kids to tend to, three little rugrats in diapers. And uh, one day her husband noticed that she was burning the candle at both ends. And so being ever so observant and ever so gracious and kind, he said, honey, you look tired. Why don't you just go take a day? Get out of the house, call the girls up for coffee, go shopping, go grab lunch, whatever you want to do, just get out of here and I'll take the kids for the day. Before he had to ply her a second time, she was out the door, and it was a wonderful day. Oh, wonderful indeed. She, she grabbed her best friend for coffee first and then had a nice lunch out to eat. So relaxing, so peaceful, so quiet, no children. It was great. She stopped off at the library, grabbed a book to read, just relaxed, went for a walk. I mean, when was the last time she'd just been able to go out for a walk? It was wonderful. She came home around supper time and walked through the door, and when she did, she noticed that the kitchen was spotless. It was perfectly clean. The dishes were put away. The trash had been taken out. The kids had been fed, bathed. They were in their jammies. And her husband kind of puffed his chest out a little bit. Hey, uh, I, I, I mopped and I swept and I vacuumed the floor. Dishes are done. There's supper waiting on the table for you. And yeah, the kids are all bathed and everything's all set. And she's just simply said, okay, thanks. Husband didn't really think she th appreciated everything that he went through. No, honey, I don't think you understand. I, I bathed the kids, I changed the diapers, I cooked supper, I put everything away, I cleaned everything up, and she said, yeah, I know, thanks. Still a little befuddled, he said, I, honey, I, you, you were gone all day, and, and I cleaned the house, I prepped the meals, I, I, I got everything all set, and she goes, yeah, I know, that's what you're supposed to do. That's just what you do. There are those things in life, isn't there, that, yeah, you're just supposed to do that. Think about it this week. Did your boss thank you for not falling asleep at the job? Did you get some kind of gold sticker, some pat on the back, some that -a boy for not getting caught napping at work? Because you're just, you're just supposed to stay awake at work. That's just what you're supposed to do. We have, have these expectations... Uh, of, of just what we're supposed to do, like the kiddos we set up here. What can they expect from mom and dad? They can expect that they'll have clothes on their back and food in their bellies, right? They, they, they can just expect that. And we, as, as parents, we have expectations too, that we can expect that we'll just clean our rooms and we'll just do our homework and we'll brush our teeth with toothpaste and we'll shower with sh soap and shampoo. That can be just expected. It's not like you need to get praised, right, Patrick? Like, hey, Mom, I brushed my teeth today. Do you, do you want a cookie or something because of that? You know, hey, Mom, I, I showered. I use soap even. Well, congratulate. That's just what you're supposed to do, right? We have those expectations of just that's, that's to be expected. 
You don't need some kind of a pat on the back. You don't need a gold star. You don't need a that a boy for doing the bare minimum of just what, what's expected of you. But do we think like that sometimes when it comes to our, our faith life? That, that, that we as Christians, because we're Christians, that, that certain things should just work out in a certain way. That God should somehow reward us even more here and now because of, of how good we lived our lives or how faithful we followed his word. I'll give you a couple examples of this kind of, this line of thinking that comes in, in our faith. If you've ever thought um, that the way things are going in your life shouldn't be going that way because you are a Christian. If you've been dissatisfied and disgruntled with how things are playing out in your life and you think to yourself, you know what, I'm a Christian. I'm, I, I walk with Jesus and his word. This isn't supposed to happen to someone like me. There's kind of those expectations of more than what God promises you. If you've ever thought, here's another example, if you've ever thought God should really be impressed at how generous you were by forgiving someone, God, did you see what I did over there? Did you see how I was, that, that great sin that was done against me, that big wrong that was done against me, and yet I was gracious enough to forgive them? There's kind of that expectation, or, or another one too, maybe third. If you've ever thought that you should be giving advice to God, you see how things are going on in the world, you know, things going on in government or the school system or, or politics or the country or the nation or whatever. You just see how things are going. You know, God, if I was in charge, here's what we would do. You understand that sometimes we think this way. Sometimes we have these expectations when, when God doesn't tell us that we ought to. To, uh, giving that kind of advice. Now, don't get me wrong. There are certain expectations you can have from God. What can you expect from him? You can expect him to love you. He promises that. And boy, do we hold him to that promise. We hold him to the promise and we, we, we thank God every night when we put our heads down on our pillows in our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for sending me Jesus and for forgiving me all my sins. Thank you for making me his, your child. Thank you, Lord, for loving me and never letting me go. You can expect that of God and you can hold God to that. But we also know that God expects things from us. He expects things from you, his child. Jesus points out a few here in the gospel for today. The first one is that we don't lead other people into sin. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said to his disciples, now think about this, he's not talking to the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, he's not talking to the prostitutes and tax collectors, he's talking to his disciples, you, me, his children. He says, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for him, for them, to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Let's break this down. First of all, he says, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. We live in a sinful world. We're, we're never going to be able to run out of temptation, uh, run away from that sinful temptation. We're surrounded by sin. We can't escape it, this side of heaven. But woe to anyone through whom they come. Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. Martin Luther is credited as saying, you can't stop the birds from flying around your, your head, but you certainly can stop them from nesting in your hair. So you can't stop the fact that there's going to be sin out there. And there's even going to maybe be sin that comes and knocks on the door of your heart. But you can prevent it from opening the door. You don't have to let it in and invite it into your life. So God expects that from us. God expects us as his children to follow his word. He expects us to follow his law. We're supposed to live that life of faith. We're supposed to just walk that and be that way, be different have different priorities and, and different values than that of the, the rest of the world. Because as we live out our lives as Christians, we're not only giving testimony to the world around us, but we're giving to the, those right within our homes. And this is something maybe as parents with children, take this to heart. It would be better for them 
to be thrown into the sea with the millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. There's that saying, better, better caught than taught. Boy, children are always observing everything, aren't they? Always soaking everything up, paying attention to everything that you do. Probably way, way more than we ever realize. They know what you value. They know what your priorities are. They know what you're placing as important in your life. That if, if a walk with God, a daily devotion, a weekly worship, if those are things that we just do whenever it's convenient or if that's really the highest point of priority, they see that, they pick that up. They listen to the language that you use. They see how you spend your time. They know. They're learning and they're listening from you. And, and if we've been setting a poor example as parents, what does Jesus say? Woe to that person. Be better to have one of those two-ton millstones tied around your neck and plunged into the sea. If that's the case, we need to repent. The second thing that he expects of us is that we'll forgive other people when they sin against us. Again, that's just what we do. That's what he expects. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The funny thing about forgiveness, I think, is forgiveness always sounds very noble until I actually have to do it. it sounds like a really, really good thing. It's something, yeah, that's a great thing for us to do is to forgive other people. But what about when I'm the one who has to do the forgiving? When I'm the one who has to let go? When someone has hurt me deeply and painfully, then it's, it's a whole different story actually putting that into practice. When someone's brought something that's just brought pain and misery and suffering into my life and I have to be the one to let it go, that's a whole different story. But that's just what we as God's children are expected to do. Now, you know, Walking with Jesus in his word, obeying his commandments, forgiving. Those are the ex expectations that, that Jesus lays out for us. And when the disciples hear this, did you notice what they did? They cried out for, to God for help. They said, increase our faith. Because this isn't easy. It's not easy. I'm not, don't get me wrong. This is not easy things to do. But the disciples say, increase our faith. And Jesus responds, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. In other words, Jesus says, it doesn't matter if you have big faith or little faith. If you have faith in God, God will work in you. If you're planted in his word, God will do these things through you. Paul talks about that in his letters on multiple occasions. He says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God is setting you up to be able to do these things. Or again, Paul says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This is something that you will do as a Christian. You will walk with Jesus in his word. Because that's just what Christians do. You will follow God's commands because that's what we just do. That's the expectation of us and we rise to the occasion because Jesus has planted that faith in our hearts. And we will even forgive because Christ's love compels us to forgive other people just as Christ has forgiven us. Now to illustrate his point at, at these are the expectations, Jesus then tells this parable, this earthly story with a heavenly meaning. He says, suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper? Get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink, and after that you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. 
You know, imagine, imagine if you went out for dinner. Anybody, anybody, anybody go out for dinner this last weekend? Anybody go out to eat? Ready, show of hands. Anybody go out to eat? Only a few people. Okay. We go, go out for dinner. Imagine you go out for dinner. We just went out to Santan Flat the other night. Mm, beautiful. Imagine you go out to Santan Flat. And all of a sudden, the waiter or the waitress, after you've been seated by the hostess, the waiter or the waitress comes down and sits down at your table and says, so what are we having? Th that, that would be a little awkward, right? That's just not how things are done. The waiter or the waitress doesn't sit down to eat with you. They're meant to serve you. That's the point of Jesus' parable. The servants of the field don't say to the master, come and join the master. Really, the slaves of the field don't come and join the master. They serve him first. Because they simply are doing what is expected of them. They're doing their duty. The same is true here. That kind of humility that we have as God's children of simply serving him and simply doing what's expecting of him is, is that, that attitude of humility. Maybe a, a, a close parallel to this. You ever notice this when you thank maybe somebody who has served in the military? Uh, and you thank them for their service. Thank them for the sacrifices, the birthdays, the Christmases that they missed while they were deployed. What's the attitude of that service member? I, I, I 99% out of the time, whenever I thank somebody who, is, who has served in the military, it's always very quick to take the spotlight off them and just say, I just, just, was just doing my job. Yeah, thanks, I was just doing my job. Yeah, thank you, just doing my duty. That kind of humble attitude is the attitude that God wants us to have as Christians. That we're not expecting pats on the back and gold stars and data boys for simply living our lives as Christ because that's just what we do. I, I, I use an illustration when I take people through the Bible information class if they're interested in learning more about the Bible and learning more about church. And when we talk about this as good works that Christians do, and the illustration is I, I have a picture of an apple tree. And I always ask the question, why, why does an apple tree grow apples? Is it because the apple tree will be, feel guilty if he doesn't? Is it, is it because he, he, he's fearful if he won't, he's, no, an apple tree just grows apples because it's an apple tree, and that's what apple trees do. Same is true for us as God's children. Why is it that Christians will live their lives the way that they do? Why will they conform their lives to the, the pattern of God's word? Why will they love God? Why will they forgive one another? Why will they lead others to come to know Christ and the forgiveness that he brings? It's because that, that's just what we as Christians do flows naturally through the faith that the Holy Spirit has planted in our hearts and reflected in our lives in everything that we do. And so we ask God to bless us in that as we plant ourselves in his word and as we live that life of love and forgiveness today and every day. With that, all God's people say amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus.